In Outback Octagon 2, you live and die by your king. And even though these scrimming lobbies are full of pro-level players, even they are capable of losing their king in more ways than one. We are going to be hopping in to Uluru, which actually just sounds like a more militarized version of Uwu. And I think it would be appropriate here because as you can see, people are going to get comfy and close, a little bit too cozy maybe even, on the edges of this map. As we are talking about uh, a map that is barren in the center. This is designed intentionally by Bidlin. The goal is to kind of have that sacred site as a win condition, all on its lows from the center, plenty of relics in that area, but then the rest of the resources get pushed to the outskirts. Now, at the time of recording, there are a few whoopsie daisies with the generation. Bidlin, he's an honest guy. He'll admit it, mainly because I just, I'm like a dog with a bone. I won't let him not admit it. <laughs> but it seems like resources typically seem to get thrusted into the corners, which puts a bit too much priority there, which is why you're already noticing that we're going to have some clashes. Three players on the left corner where there's barely any resources. Meanwhile, on the right corner, check out this. It's ridiculous. You can drop a TC in one of about 10 locations and touch three resources in this area. Well, there's plenty of familiar faces that are going to be touching those resources. Wham sneaks in on the south side and the red playing as the Roos. And just to his north is going to be Recon on the Ottomans with a prime position here. Two tree lines, gold, stone. Does need to be a little bit worried about the food situation. Doesn't have easy access. And of course, no, uh, no halal meat here, so no borsies for him. But he has got the deer to the north side. And then, of course, just across the west, we are going to have Kor in the orange playing as the Abbasid. Interesting position to take as well as the Abbasids. Usually you want to kind of boom up a little bit more. He gets the berries, but he misses out on the stone as well as gold by a decent margin. Luckily, no one's too close uh, to take him out. At least anyone who is close is distracted, as I'm imagining that Wham and Recon are going to be fighting, brawling nonstop in this area. When we check out in the south, we can see that someone who got to sit all by the lonesome, it is a good old Yun Sung Bin, better known as Marine Lord, aka the Chimp, aka you're not high enough to ride this ride. He is, of course, our World Low Champ from last year. Very talented player. Great to see him back in these free throws. And he got a corner all to himself. Very reserved positioning here. We'll be able to extend into that corner where it's just masses of resources to play with. And as we rotate around in the pink, we are, of course, going to have Louis MT. Great to see him actually featured in one of these. I think this might be the first one we've been able to cast of him in the free for -alls. This guy is in the top 10 on solo rank, by the way, and has consistently been up in the top 10, top 20 for a very long time. And then as we rotate around, well, this is the messy area of the map. We are going to have Zertan on the Chinese in the purple. Joined by Matisse on the other side of a woodline playing as the HRE and Teal. And then just the North Puppy Paw in the green as the Mongols. That's of course going to round out our players. And you're already seeing what's happening here with the King walking around. Remember, there's three minutes of peace time. So no immediate panic. And by the way, you may be noticing that some players are missing their Kings. You can see by the dots on the minimap who actually has them out and about. And the reason why not every player has their King is because some of them hadn't completed their TC. Remember, there was a change made here and it was a good change. There was one uh, I was discussing when behind the scenes. Is like there was this awkward situation where, and this is disgusting, Matisse, bad boy. Um, there was this awkward situation where sometimes players were having the kings spawn into tree lines. In fact, Divine DFP was doing like a speed run of P Hub. Are you stuck, Step King? Moments uh, the the other night. I think he he asked for a remake several times over from what I heard, because his king just kept getting stuck, or a villager just kept getting stuck. So to try and minimize that issue. Not only, of course, have we not got Mega Random to help in that regard, but also now the Kings will spawn when your town center is complete at the TC. The big improvement. Um, of course, it does mean you miss out on scouting in the early game with the King, which is a little bit unfortunate, but the only alternative to this was to have all the Kings spawn in one location, which, you know, might drum up its own concerns. Well, you know, noticing this King. Not so chunky right now, but remember, we did watch one of these last night, and the way this works is each time you age up, the king is going to scale. So 250 to 500, 750 to 1,000. And then, of course, as he scales up, he's going to basically uh, double this value that you see at the bottom here, right? So each age up gets you an additional one melee armor and two ranged armor, as well as increasing the movement speed by, I want to say it was like point zero, like I want to say it's point one two or point two. This guy gets pretty speedy. I have already laid a suggestion on this, by the way, uh, because people find the king to be a bit absurd to chase down. I would really like to see 
him get a Khan movement speed arrow ability just for himself and then have this slow movement speed by default so that you can have this burst of speed, but it's situational and it requires timing instead of you just running around in circles, Benny Hills in. Because once this guy's in Imperial Age, he moves quicker than Knights, right? He is two-legged cavalry. He puts Palace Guard to shame. Things like 1.64 movement speed. <laughs> oh, dear. We might actually get to see the stupidity of that in this game. Things a little bit chill for the moment. I wonder which way Core's going to go with the Abbasids here. Like, you do have access to trade nearby. You could even actually trade to this corner here. It'd probably generate, I want to say, around like 70 to 80 gold, which doesn't sound great, but it's free trade. and It'll be free for a while. It looks like, yeah, Marine Lord is taking advantage of the scouting opportunity there. This is something that a lot of players like to do because at this stage in the game, as long as you don't run underneath for TC, you're not going to die. All right, at this stage in the game, people don't actually have enough villages to garrison and insta-kill your king. So you'd have to be blatantly not paying attention to just lose out. In fact, you see the value of this vision there. Decent amount of scouting. In fact, if you check the radius, like it's obviously smaller than the, the scout itself, but not by that much, really, all things said and done. By the way, big thing with Luru is a lot of the sheep seem to spawn towards the center. So if you do play this map and you find yourself going around the outskirts, you'll be lucky to, to get more than a handful of sheep. I've experienced that firsthand. It's painful. It can especially matter with some of these spawn locations, right? Especially if you get sieves like the Abbasids or the Delhi. You know, get your hands on the Ottos. All of a sudden, all these Pumbas in the corners are, are completely worthless to you. So you have to fight tooth and nail over deer. You might not be lucky on berries, right? You might not get a ridiculous spawn the likes of which Poppy Poor did here. I'm still waiting for one of these pro games to end in someone losing their king to a boar straight away, by the way. <laughs> oh, no, actually, that's something we can't have anymore because of the changes, and that makes me sad. I remember hosting a community free-for-all on this mod and someone typing that they had been killed by a boar like a minute and a half into the game. And now, now I will never get that again. Like, in theory, you could. If you kill the three villagers, they're going to die, right? But compared to the king as a one target, it just seems less likely. I'm really worried for Recon's position here. You're between a rock and a hard place, right? Like, Wham hasn't taken too much territory greedily, so he's not going to get have, uh, hard proud. And Core doesn't have any other target necessarily but Recon. And considering how limited Core's resources are in the center here, he's probably going to want to move to that corner anyway. And the cool thing for him is actually, if he times it right, Wham and Recon are probably going to brawl. They're going to just wear each other down. By the time that Core comes in, it could just be an easy one-two pickings. And that's very important, remember, because... If you do snipe that king, that's going to claim you an extra 50 maximum population once you reach the threshold, right? So you won't see it now. You still have to build houses. But like, for example, you, you would definitely see it on the Mongol player. If he was to kill a player right now, an extra 50 population would be added to his maximum. And we've seen some absurd games, right? We've seen like a 350. I think we had a 400 or intended 400 last night. Once a player reaches that point, it, it's almost impossible. To win. Like you need a very very slight situation to be able to come out ahead there, right? If they're on 400 pop, you know, yeah. that means they've eliminated three players. Yeah. That means there's going to be four of you left. You need to immediately gang up on them. It usually doesn't play out that way. Usually you're going to have one person on one side of the map with four kills and someone on the other side has already claimed one and it, it just muddies the water in a very grim way. We are seeing now as Marine Lord moves towards the south corner. Has it gone for the Golden Gate? This is going to allow him to eventually just buy in to the second TC if he wants with the tickets. He has got gold access, right? Stone is far away. So I'm expecting this to be tickets into second TC. Maybe you drop it down here on the stone and then you just boost up further. Could even think about just like securing more wood with the boar in this area. Okay, that was intimidating the way it came from behind the tree. Like, sup? <laughs> no, nothing, nothing, bro. We ain't, we ain't got problems. But we got problems? No, Pumba. Stay to your own territory. I, I don't want no beef. So you want pork? No, Pumba, no. <laughs> and we see why Matiz was adamant that he wanted to get rid of uh, of Zertin from his neighborhood. We are going to get the Barbican dropped on the Ark. And, oh, this is so annoying. This position for Matisse is even worse than the Recon's theoretical one in five or ten minutes. Like, Matisse 100% got the worst position here. He's got a Mongol player to his north side blocking him off additional resources. 
He can barely wiggle his way out past the barbican in this phase. Like, actually, if Zertan just crawls down and drops a single outpost here, that's pretty much GG for Matisse. Oh, yeah, yeah. You gotta remember that Zertan isn't doing this from a position of weakness, right? He has plenty of resources to access, stone. He's able to munch into this woodline as well, unhindered. Uh, has got secondary woodlines he can access. Double berry patch. That's amazing, by the way, for the supervision of the mill. In fact, he could even place this mill maybe a little bit over here into the center. If you want to be long-term optimal, but it doesn't matter. Popping down another for 50 is worth it to be optimal in this regard. Of course, he did have deer over to the side. He's not going to access that too soon. He's going to want that extra gold generation, likely, especially considering that the gold vein is so far out. There's a Mongol player nearby. Let's be in that Mongol player. He's going to be rushing the second TC. So Puppy Paw is looking to be very gluttonous here. Doesn't want to have any awkward engagements early on. He wants to kind of secure that later phase in the game. Understandably so in this situation. And also, notice what he does. He drops it on the t uh, on the Uvu, where he's already built free pastures. So now this is going to be his food eco area, and it's going to be very efficient. And did Quark go for... Yeah, so he went for the eco wing in the end. So he's just intending to TC boom up, as to be expected. You arguably could do trade, but it's just going to draw unwanted attention towards you in this situation. <laughs> I love this from Zern. He's actually moving the, the king out to be the garrison unit in the outpost. And there he's going to be a pushback. This is just... Oh, man. I feel so bad for Matisse right now. He's getting sniped because of the outpost on the north side. He lost three villages there. And Matisse, does, does he not know? Oh, my God. Matisse doesn't know. I Oh, God. What you do not know can truly hurt you, my friend. Not just the outpost from the Chinese, but this is really starting to feel like a Kublai Khan time. Mongols plus Chinese kind of just becoming one. In this situation, to brutalize the HRE, and now Matisse's only option is to run for the high hills. But even that isn't safe. Look what's just to his south side. We've got Louis over here. Louis, who, by the way, has been going for trade as he went into the Chamber of Commerce. Interesting choice. Surprising one as well. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, look what Wham's been doing. Oh my god, the Bardishas, the Bardishas, the Gremlins, plus the Outposts. Recon is stuck. And this is the problem, right? When you gravitate to these corners so naturally because all the resources, if your position is just a little bit off, you're out of the game. It's so difficult to get this right, especially with limited scouting vision in the early phase of the game. You see, Gremlins are at least going to be cleaned up, but what do you access here as Recon, right? Wood is very finite for you now. You went double TC, you've at least got the deer and the berries behind this. But no doubt about it. Wham it is a boa constrictor in this situation. Looking to choke Recon out and not in a, a, a sexy fun time way. This is just going to be absolute pain. <laughs> Desperation truly has sunk in, my friends. He is far away from home and is at risk of being targeted by two players. Louis, for the time being, is just chilling. But if he just builds one or two knights, this is over. At the moment is just going to be certain horsemen to contest with, and that's something that, you know, Matisse can sort of hold against. But this can get grim very fast. It's interesting to see that Puppy Boy did not go for the Silver Tree, so didn't even try for the opportunity to trade. But I think, actually, if you want to go multi-TCs, the Deerstone just feels very desirable in the early phase of the game. Like it just becomes so optimal because you're buffing a huge chunk of your eco. Like if you think about the percentage gains when you scale to this many villages, that extra movement speed really does start to add up. He's going to be adding in the racks now on the backside. So getting ready for a press. Second TC is going to be added in by Zert. Now remember, this is no Imp Academy play, so he hasn't got the Song Dynasty unlock. God, Matisse is... I mean, he's scrambling for anything you can find. Under the board now. The problem with this is, is this should now be spotted. In fact, he may have actually pushed Louis off this. Yeah, the traders are going elsewhere. Wait, what? Louis? How did this happen? Marine Lord doesn't... Like, he didn't know originally, but he does now. He's got a scout on this, so no doubt he's going to block this out. He did tech up fast and looks like he's rushing to get onto the relics. In fact, is anyone really ready to do so? Matisse is the other guy who would have liked to do this, but this has been a hard start for the HRE. Puppy Paw instead will be the second one in the castle age, but his positioning is not desirable for going for the relics. 
So this looks like a game where Marino could easily get, I want to say six, maybe even seven of these relics. And I don't think anyone else can contest that, right? Not many people are feeling aggression into the center or around the center. In fact, Marine Lord, if anything, is going to be the aggressor as he moves out and spots the TC from Louis, a greedy one at that. This is very dangerous for Louis. He could potentially lose all of the villagers with the second night coming in. In fact, he might just have to cancel it. Oh, no! You came, you saw, you got conquered. Oh, good Lord. You have to play left side. So less desirable TC here on the gold. And you see what Louis was trying to secure. He needed the wood for a, a farm transition prep. Now he doesn't really have much in the way of wood in the back, right? Like he doesn't have any secondary line to rely upon here. Gee, ay caramba, this is... This is looking grim, not just for Matisse, but actually for, for Louis as well. I think Marino's gonna go on a delayed trigger here, right? Just gra grab all the relics, boost your eco up. In about three or four minutes, start flooding knights. And I don't know if Louis is able to match that. Like he's delayed on his tech up. If he goes to Royal Institute, he can bite back. But I think if he goes Guildhall, it's a GG play. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Eastern corner, Recon has somehow existed. The Trash Panda has not been taken out with the trash yet. He's getting thrashed by trash tier units. These archers just proving a nuisance, slowing him down. Another problem that you may be noticing here for Recon is you're playing the uh, you're playing the Ottomans, and uh, it's kind of like watching someone who's put on 20 kilos try to fit into a small shirt. You know, where do you build the blacksmiths and all the buildings around it? Where do you build your military schools? You kind of can't. It looks like he's going for a Mena Arms play to get out of this, but I I don't think it's going to be fast enough. The Gwam's Knights are already in. This is problematic. Villagers have to just turn and fight. The idle time alone. And folks, by the way, this idle time hurts an Ottoman player. This is not your standard Otto. He doesn't have any passive production other than the Imperial Mehmet, uh, Mehmet Imperial Armory, which isn't even being buffed by a blacksmiths. I mean, speaking things that can come from blacksmiths. Looks like Matisse went for a ramp play. <laughs> oh, God. You gotta try something, right? But this just this stinks of death right now. I mean, if if Zertan just builds a single ram, if he gets a blacksmith himself, Matisse has lost everything. I would look on the relics from Marine Lord as well. He's yoinking them up, so it's going to be six in the next half a minute. Already moving out for the seventh and has it guarded with knights. He got everything from the center here, folks. Remember, uh, there are not many players up in Castle Age. The other one that's actually been contesting relics has been Poppy Paul, and this is just Poppy Paul's first. Damn good game for Marine Lord. Very difficult to see how people bite back against this. The court continues to surge his empire. This boy is getting big. In fact, cool. Yeah, he's already underway. As I was going to say, I think he's going to be the first up into an Imperial. It's already actually almost complete. It's going to be a strong timing. He can even just dive in and take the kill on Recon before Wham can finish him. Because wham has gone for a very slow bleed out, right? Take all the resources away, restrict him. Just keep him as a meal for later. <laughs> Wait, the... <laughs> Matisse has an escape plan. Get in the armored car, Mr. President. I mean, I like this, actually. It's mainly archers. This saves a bunch of villagers. But Matisse still really doesn't have any grand plan here. <laughs> also, remember, he never brought his king from the TC. So, what's really defending you here? Meanwhile, Marine Lord is going to move out for the Sacred Site Control. A bold maneuver considering that nobody has been eliminated yet, but I guess he wants to get them to come out and play. With 10 minutes to work with, they're not going to be in a rush, especially considering that Marine Lord is not consolidating forces around the location. Instead, he's actually securing his flanks and just bolstering the back line. So we are at 40 C Roos. High Trade House, by the way, we didn't check it. It was only 119 gold. A bit difficult with these generations to get maximum value. Arguably, he might have been a bit better served on this one or maybe where the boar is. 
is a bit of a difficult one, right? Because I think the, the gaps here are pretty even, and most of them have a uh, gold vein in the way. Recon. <laughs> He's going to keep the Mangonel alive. So maybe, maybe he gets an opportunity to do something here. But folks, he's on the clock. Core is getting ready. He's already prepping hand cannoneers. You know, if, if that mass reaches 2025, you add in a few rams, they're both going to die to him. In the meantime, Louis, of course, does get assassinated. In fact, did that say that Zertin got? No, no, sorry. Louis assassinated Zertin, rather. What? Oh my god, because Puppy Paul got involved. Poppy Paul with just a few rams and a few men at arms breaks Zern and he's first out. Unexpectedly so, Matisse lasts longer and now he's running. <laughs> and this this is a, a chase that you can escape. 1.25 movement speed, able to actually get away. <laughs> this is so pathetic to watch. But Louis, Louis could snipe one here, right? He got the kill onto Zern. I actually think he could get the kill on the Matisse. It's only a 500 health unit, and these are raw knights. But instead, he actually just backs away. So somehow, Matisse is actually able to migrate the entire way across the map without losing the king. Very surprising here. Although, Puppy Boy is going to be hot on his tail. So the problem now is, like, how do you protect yourself? You have to reach a corner and wall yourself in. It's probably the only way. And Matisse, he's got 328 wood. You know, you can't afford to use too much of that wood on building walls. You kind of need to, to get more wood for an additional TC or even just a lumber camp. <laughs> Are we just donating to Core right now? I feel like that's what's happening here. <sighs> Marilo's position is just so good in this game. Seven relics. All these resources in the corner. Like, I, it's very difficult for me to see a way in which Marino doesn't win this. I think the other player that's really well poised is like the Puppy Pawn Core, the other ones that come to mind. Louis bolstering a little bit, but he's so exposed in an open field like this. Unless he walls himself in, I'm worried that he just dies to one attack from Marine Lord. Maybe not instantly, but in terms of the damage done to his eco, it will feel irreparable. <laughs> this chase is still on. Also, let me get the action music ready. It just really doesn't have the same ring I'm looking for. They just look like this awkward tourist that find everything interesting, don't they? It's like, oh, look, a tree. Oh, look, another tree. Oh, my God, camels! Well, I think Cole will be claiming this head. He's going to try to rush up and outpost it. King's going to glide by. T-posing it out. But I suppose that you just have to choose who you want to die to here. He'll get the garrison. And now he means he gives the kill over to Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw is the only one that can kill this outpost. But remember, they have to kill the villagers first because otherwise they'll just re emergency repair it. Not the normal way for the HRE repairs, but just rush it up again. <laughs> and he's on, the oh, dude, there's no way. He's, his HP is too low. If he tries to move, he just dies. Oh God, he's dead. He's so dead. The second wave of Camel Archers is gonna guarantee that. And then behind that, the Torchy boys. 19 spin, and that's going to be enough to breach. Camel Archers with the high base damage are able to deal with these, these men at arms. And after that, it's just a, a feed to core. <laughs> Matisse, bro, you've. Oh, this is the final outpost. He doesn't have 100 extra wood after this. <laughs> All right, Matisse, your move. Because I'm pretty sure that king is not going to make it to a new home. GG, Matisse is out. Core will claim the kill. That was awkward. <laughs> Imagine being Puppy Paw and running across the whole map just for that. <laughs> Back to the corner we go, slightly frustrated. He's going to need to be fast back to that corner because look at who's posturing here, Louis. He's ready to skirmish. A decent amount of knights as well, but unfortunately for him, Puppy Paw already built a defense wall. 22 spearmen here with the yam is enough to just kill this entire bulk. So Louis understands quickly and backs away. It looks like he has started to wall up, and it is going to be stone walls on the east side. I respect this. This is the correct choice. I think the best move that Louis has right now is seclude him and Puppy Paw and fight. 
Because you've got a better chance of killing Poppy Paul than you have of killing Marine Lord. Like, Marine Lord's position is just too strong here. And Poppy Paul is getting strong now as well. White Stupa on the way. I actually really do prefer the White Stupa here in these type of formats. So, I think when it comes to the Imperial Ace choice for the Mongols, Carnet Palace makes a lot of sense for early Imperial. And it peaks mid Imperial Max. The logic here is like getting you know, access to a few nested bees at the beginning can be very handy. But when you get to mid, late game, right, when the Imperial's going on for a bit, White Stupa really comes to out uh, as a winner, right, with a stone generation, able to get you all of those juicy upgrades, the ability to place cannon towers. And it actually holds strong for a very long time. It's not until you're like, you know, 50, 60, 70 minutes into a game, into Imperial, where all the resources are gone from the map, where Karnak comes back into the picture. Because then, of course, having free units when you can't afford anything because everything's gone, is desirable, right? But most players aren't going to want to play for that. It's just too awkward, right? You know, if your game plan is to survive for 80 more minutes to then win, you, you're a masochist. That's all I can say. Quite simply, my, my question to you would be, why? Especially if you can end the game much quicker. And of course, the thing to keep in mind, that whole point of burning all the resources of the map, in a free-for-all, on a map this big, it's going to take a very long time for every single resource to be drained. But, well, while we're talking about this, we should have been talking about the fact that Cool has gone in for recon. I was wondering when this was going to happen. In fact, I kind of just forgotten that recon was even alive. I don't think he felt alive, though. I imagine that recon, about 10 minutes into this game, said, Alexa, play Lincoln Park and then turned it up to maximum, put a very dark hoodie on, and just kind of went numb to the world. But that's cool now to 300 bomb. If they don't target him soon, he's just going to win. Push in. Wham. Not going to be able to hold. I mean, this is, this is going to be a wipe of the army. Wham. Where is the king right now? I... Oh, no. What? So why are you a grief? He's like, hey, comrade, I'm rushing to... Oh. Marine Lord trying to avoid a Rus coup here. Says there's going to be only one ruler of our country. The freest 50 pop you're going to see in this game. And it goes to a player with one of the most potent positions possible. Cole will definitely be molding slightly or missing out on the free 50 population. People try and say that's cheating from Wham. I don't know if there was a specific rule on that. And also, by the way, for anyone trying to argue, like even if there was a rule that says you cannot feed to other players, if I'm Wham here, I'm like, sorry, bro, I just didn't know. And it's very possible that he didn't know that Marine Lord had this whole area under his control and had walled it up, right? It's very hard to kind of prove that. Unless the player decides to admit it, which is bold. By the way, I, I'm going to warn people now, this will become a thing in a tournament format. Because let's say Core is the highest scoring player in the lobby. I'm not going to feed an extra kill to him to give him a bigger lead. I'm going to walk away from him intentionally and maybe give him to uh, give the kill to Marine Lord who has zero points. Sorry, Marine Lord. Uh, <laughs> it, it just it makes sense in the free for alls right? Like you're playing the, it's you'll see this in things like Battle Royals as well, where you know maybe maybe a player has like the lead and they might try to kind of like full ape send on the the second place team because they know where they drop, or they'll actively try to avoid the neighborhood in which the highest scoring teams are to prevent them from farming. Like there's, there's so many kind of layers to these type of environments. Poppy ball on the move. This will not work. There's a castle. You've got the torch resistance. I think Puppy Paw, if he wants to target out Core, which isn't the wrong thing to do here, uh, he's going to either need some assistance or he's going to need a proxy base. You can't just march the map like this. Abbasis is the most difficult sieve to do this against because of the fact they have the, uh, the extra torch armor. Puppy Ball just deciding that he needs a bit of population control happening over here. He's like, Core won't be OP if we keep him away from 300 cap. 
Yeah, this is just a scout force. He just wants to check the lay of the lands, see if there's a way in. I, I, I hate this argument. It's like, oh, it's team. Like, like, you could argue so many things are teaming. This is like when I meanfully am in a game and I say I'm going to do something and two seconds later someone responds perfectly to it. I'm like, are they watching the stream? But that is at least more provable because you can at search the name at least. But like, folks, teaming is a subjective thing to assess in free for all environments. You are not going to get away from that. And actually, I would argue it makes perfect logical sense in a format like this to be like, well, Core's already killed two players. Core has more points than Marine Lord. I'm going to give the kill to Marine Lord so that Core doesn't just farm the entire lobby. Because in a point format, if Core takes this many other kills and goes up to 350, not only is he netted three points there for killing three kings in the tournament format, he's then likely to eliminate at least probably another two because of how much population he has, right? So, if Core's already got himself an extra, like, let's say, you know, he's already, well, he's, he's got two points so far. That would have been free, right? Let's say he was already at free as a perfect example of this. I'm not going to be the person giving him a fourth when there's a player in another corner that I know has killed no one. I am going to say that I have a better chance of ranking better in the tournament or even winning it if I feed the point over to the zero point player. It makes mathematical sense. And also, by doing that, I create a player that can potentially contest the now highest scoring player in the lobby. It's, it is, it's the free for all politics, and you can't get away from it. And, and if you like, I wouldn't even argue it's teaming. It's just a logical play, right? It's like when someone, it's like when someone's playing French versus English and they try to all in feudal. You're like, well, he's feeding, man. Why doesn't he just play for like imperial age French? Giggles to self. What would be the point? This was the best timing. So you all in, right? Marine definitely seems to be all in on his focus into Louis still. Louis, who has luckily been able to wall off his northern flank, and Puppy Poor has kind of remained on guard there instead of on the offensive. That might change soon, though. I just don't see an, a way that Puppy Poor wants to chase Core across the map. Most likely, he wants to bolster his own pop because he's not got a kill yet, remember. So, really actually needs the extra 50 at least if he wants to even try to compete with the Abbasas in the late game. You have to remember that this Civ is vulgar. Right? Think about the production rates because of the Golden Age they get in conjunction with the premium units they have in the late game. You've got the Spearmen, you've got the Camel Archers, you've then also got things like the Military Boot Camp that bolster your infantry further. Now, it's fair to say that Abbasas still remain like top three when it comes to hyper late game situations. Dude, I can't believe Louis still trading. <laughs> I mean, the guy's got some commitment. He has some conviction. I'll give him that. He needs to be careful about the way he's marching away from his base. You can see that the Moonlord is not letting up. In fact, now he's going for a keep drop to try and secure some territory. Red Pulse makes this very difficult to breach, though. Remember, the French at this stage in the game, they, get, they did get an interesting buff recently with the Red Pulse. Because now it activates Arbalist emplacements for all the TCs by building this landmark. In fact, this change, I feel like it actually makes Red Pulse much more desirable than going for the College of Artillery. Especially considering how kind of lackluster I think artillery has been in a lot of comps recently. It feels quite rare to see people fix out on bombards, right? In fact, I'd say people more often gravitate towards trebuchets instead of bombards. Now, you might argue a bit different in these free form environments, but definitely when you look at the 1v1 data, it, just, it feels like, you know, even on civs that have kind of juiced up bombards, like the Chinese or like the, the Ottomans, you just don't see them come into play often. Ramp moving in. This is such an awkward fight for Louis to take. Oh, this is not where you want to be. Was that a misclick? I feel like he was trying to wrap onto the horseman, but miscalculated how many knights were here. I'm just going to be wiped. So he's going to free up population. Now, remember, Louis, he did get a kill quite early on, but I, I don't know how he's able to leverage this. It's difficult to see a way Nick gets ahead when you consider that Marine Lord got given a kill from Watt. So they're even in terms of their, their ceiling. 
at least on population. But in terms of quality, there's no doubting the fact that Marine Lord is a mile ahead. And just look how quickly these Rams got through the Red Palace. Louis just gives up. Plays the World War II iteration and just waves the white flag. The Marine Lord should be able to move in and yoke himself a sexy extra 50 population. Emo on Puppetball Land. There's been a snot trail just oozing across the map here. I'm wondering what Puppy Paul's plan or intent was actually with the way he's approached this. He doesn't even know about Marine Lord. That explains a lot. I, I feel like, you know, if you know that Marine Lord's on the south side, you probably try to snatch the kill on Louis. And it's critical because of what we talked about. Like, he needs population to contest. And to clarify people, surrendering does not give the population no. You have to go kill the king who has not been killed yet. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing. Okay, I would forgive any player for not necessarily spotting this. This is your default vision. Folks, where is the king? Maybe you glimpse it like that, but anywhere over here, you're not seeing it. And then even if you look, you go, well, there's no king there. You'd have to rotate the camera and notice the man that has basically worn... Uh, a castle ghillie suit. <laughs> Grey just seems to work perfectly for hiding against keeps, doesn't it? So unlikely that that, that is going to be a claim. Like, maybe Puffy Paw marches down here and sees it. That would be the jackpot for him. Clash on the eastern front in the meantime. 100% favoring core here. It's the Abbasid Spheres. Like, you can't rely on cavalry to beat them. You're probably going to need a switch up. We are seeing Streltsy massed. Problem with this is Streltsy are good in prolonged fights where you're able to stand still due to the, the static deployment. But if Korb manipulates the fight, he actually has the edge due to the boot camp. The extra 20 health actually does a lot for him here. Now the reveal ability for the king. I can't remember if that reveals dead kings or not. I always forget. I assume it does. But still, like, even if you scan it out, I mean, it, it's a weird one. You would come in here and you click. The thing is, like, we can see it and go, well, why don't you just turn? <laughs> just just turn your camera. Me turning like this is already making some of you run. <laughs> Most players just, like, they, they inherently avoid turning. It's interesting as well, because I've talked before about how actually um, playing from the, the north side of a map versus the south in water maps is actually advantage because people be, people don't want to turn their cameras. Because you're able to kind of hide the density of your ships and things like demos more easily than a player coming from the south. It's kind of weird to think about how those dynamics impact. Cool. Marching in. Oh, I've never seen this from court before. Mass Horseman? No. Oh, <laughs> Dude, I feel like this is a go-to trick. Most players it is, but it just becomes synonymous for me with core. The amount of games I've watched him turn around that he was meant to lose because he just massed 150 horsemen. I don't think this is going to be enough, though. 43 horsemen, this is more of a scouting force, I think. He just wants to sniff out what's happening in the base, just how many outposts he's having to contest. And the answer is a lot. There is quite a lot here. And most of them have been upgraded. And uh-oh, Poppy Paul is trading. 250 gold. This could get problematic. Because I don't think Marine Lord has any interest in going after Puppy Paw. His positioning just doesn't make sense for it. Core could easily get double teamed here. Mm. I actually think Core needed to find a way of kind of making peace, but like I don't think positioning ever would have allowed for it, right? Let's be real here. If I'm Marine Lord, I was always going to attack Core next. If I'm Core, I was always going to go for Marine Lord next. Puppy Paw has benefited so much from his position here. Because of the way that the, the power's played out. Marine Lord starting to move up a little. I think we've got to speed this up a little bit. Because I'm just thinking that this feels like a stalemate clash until Puppy Paw is ready to get involved. And I think Poppy Paul is going to boom his eco first. He's just going to be a greedy mother ducker. 
So I really don't expect the Mongol player to do much for another five minutes at least. Maybe even ten. I say that. He has gone for the sacred site. So just being a, a little fawn on the side. But really, this is just more gold for Puppy Four. Wait, these were cause siege war shops? Where was he? No, 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 no. Sorry, no, it's not. I'm an idiot. That's a Marine Lord. There we go. I was about to say, I was getting confused for a set there. I love that Marine Lord is trying to crawl up the base, though. We talked about the production rate uh, for the Abbasids. If you want to compete with them, you simply cannot rely on pushing units from home. You need a proxy base, especially considering the population disadvantage you have. But this, folks, this is absolutely massive. Look at the strolls he go. Woo! Speed run that one. Yeah, this is one of the big problems with what Core is doing here. Camel Archers just don't win this. So if you consider Camel Archers' health versus Streltsy's, they only have an extra 110, then look at the damage difference. So you don't have double the health, but Streltsy have over double the damage. So consider that in conjunction with the fact that you're going to be able to stand still and fight because you have superior range, right? Four tower range compared to 3.5. It's just a losing battle for Core. The problem he has here is, like, he's just trying to play a, a burnout. It does seem to be working. But my concern is Puppy Paw is not going to hang around and let you do this. Puppy Paw is on the move. Oh, man. This has got to be so infuriating, actually, for Core. If this state is a 1v1, I think he beats Marine Lord. Like, Marine Lord's eco is in shambles. Whereas Core is sustained forever. It's the power of the Abbas's late game food income, right? But Puppy Paw is going to stretch forces here. It means that Marine Lord's going to be able to take premium fights with minimum casualties. And that might allow him to bulk up, you know, four, five, six K food reserve at all times. So which stage this, this funky phase he's in is kind of just removed from the board. In fact, this is going to cover him at a key point, right? He hasn't actually set up that many farms yet, but this should give him that kind of layering to get into them. Of course, for the time being, he's going to keep poking the prod around the flanks. Puppy Paw is making progress, though. Diving in deeper. This is important what he's doing here. Like, cool, he's got big reserves on the food. But if he goes to this kind of, like, dead brain, push, 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 push approach, I can't believe I'm saying this, but, like, 29k food can disappear very fast, especially considering those production rates we talked about. Marine Lord. He needs to actually make some holes in these walls. If he can just start to kind of wiggle his way in, send a few cavalry groups in, he can shut everything down on the backside. Wait, are they? Oh, I thought they were still building the keep even though they're eliminated. <laughs> that baited me for a set that I was like, what? What is this magic? Looks like Papa Paul's assault has been cleaned up. Slow rebuild. Looks like he's going heavier into hand cannoneers this time. Something that he can definitely afford considering the non-stop trade. Um, kind of surprised this didn't get raided fully. Like, we know that Core came in the area, but he dove for the main base to scout things out. And since then, he's been too distracted by Marine Lord, so... No alternate assault. Meanwhile, Puppy Paw is still just standing on his sacred site. <laughs> Finally, is going to be stopped. <laughs> I'm surprised he was given the four minutes for free, but it's not the biggest pressure, right? Pressure is coming, however, from Marine Lord. Of oh, course, cool. remember, we said food should last quite a while here. He is munching for it very quickly with what he's building, though. Hand cannoneers, camel archers. Also, keep in mind, Marine Lord, he has brought five mangonels, and you're playing into choke points. This is a potential wipe in favor of Marine Lord. If Core misplays his positioning in this at all, losing this many hand cannoneers, I honestly think you're going to surrender a huge chunk of your base just because of how quick they can die and how slow they are to reinforce. Now, for Core fans, of course, Yaz got plenty of buildings ready to push out their next unit immediately. Won't be crippled instantly in that regard. Three hits, Strelsey Mass. Mango shot's coming in, adding a lot of damage in there. Needs to make sure he protects the flanks and he does exactly that. Horseman not able to get around. Mangoes deal with the front line. They actually haven't targeted out the hand cannoneers yet. Missed opportunity. Marine Lord stretched Finn here. Looks like he's going to be forced to retreat. He should at least be able to get a reasonable trade in terms of overall value. In terms of reserves available, he's losing. There's no other way of describing what's happening there. Dense at least made, though. The proxy base is being built, but losing the siege is definitely going to slow him down quite a lot here. 
I think looking back at that fight, maybe if Marine Lord had got the first flurry of the Maganel shots out into the hand cannoneers as they ran in, he probably holds the front line a lot longer. You have to remember that these hand cannoneers are sniping down your premium units as well as your, your cannon fodder very quickly. You know, hindsight 2020. In the moment, I think like it was an auto attack, and then he, by the time they're in range, Core did start to kind of spread the line a little. Manganels are really weird in that regard. It feels like there's this kind of this sweet spot when your enemies around like 60 range mass, but once they go like 100, the line gets so wide, it feels like you need so many Maganels to still have an impact. Well, he's going to have many Maganels anyway. Six more produced. And Puppy Paul, still just chilling. I think we're going to speed up again a bit. Of course, making progress, but Puppy Paul really is just being a greedy ducker on the side. Wait, has he discovered the. Oh my god. Puppy Paw might spot the king because he's burning farms here. So remember, Puppy Paw, he's got the increased bounty. So he's getting, was it, 75 food, uh, gold, and stone for each building he burns. He actually might see the king. Like, if you go here and you click, you're going to see a crown hovering. In fact, so he, he doesn't, I'm pretty sure Puppy Paw doesn't play panoramic. So he's zoomed like this. Classic, right? There's a high chance that he'll see that crown. In the meantime, at least rebuilt the walls. Come on. Spot it. It will make your game. Just that one little sexy detail. Come on. No way. Louis is technically still alive in that regard. Is there a push notification if Puppy assassinates Surrender King? I can't remember. Because usually people insta-kill the king after Surrender anyway. I guess we'll find out. Meanwhile, Core is showing a lot of respect the way he's backed up. Reload really is starting to kind of get him by the long curlies here. I think the issue right here for Core is he, he definitely needs the Culverin. Yeah, okay, he's finally got into them. This is what was missing. He was just losing too many units to the Maganels. So Marine Lord was actually getting decent exchanges where he shouldn't. I actually think Puppy Paw's not going to see it. I, I cannot believe he's not going to see this. I mean, I can't believe it, but like, I, I don't want to. I want him to get this because I want to have a freeway game here. Like right now, it just looks like Puppy Paw's playing for second. Push it. Mango shots out. Damage underwhelming. Worrisome, it looks like he might not have enough troops to actually defend the Maganel Mass. Second flurry in, it hits pretty hard with the Camel Archer Mass, but he gets his hand cannon is. There's the damage. Big wallop into Core's main army. Ram's taking out the keeps on the side. Strelz can hold four Maganels remaining. Marino's actually achieving a lot here. The mass coverings from Core is too much. This is far too much. Strelz can just wipe you out quickly here. That's nine coverings. Core screams nine as he realizes what's happening here. Strelz is finally getting range. We'll force him back. Now, keep in mind that Marine Lord is playing as the Roos. I believe he did go for... No, he did not go for the High Armory, so he does not have that extra banded arms range. So Springles is not a great counter here to the Culverins. But Strozzi might just do it anyway. The only thing that's missing here for Marine Lord is the next wave of Spears. If he gets the Spears in here, he's able to take out all the Culverins. <laughs> so this is kind of awkward. Marine Lord now knows that Core's running out of wood because of this play up here. There's a keep here attacking his uh, his hunter cabin. So he should kind of send signals to Marine Lord that, that, you know, he's drained the corner. He's moving out on the flanks now. Also, by doing this, it's probably going to put him in direct contest with Puppy Paw eventually. Seems to me like Core is going to get teamed. We always expected that with the way that the, the final three have carved out their positions. But now it just seems more likely than ever. Puppy Paw still doesn't know about this kid. I think he might spot it if he torches down the keep. Like, that's kind of the interesting thing here, is if any player was going to spot this, it was going to be a Mongol player. Because you're eventually going to torch down all the buildings to get paid, right? 
The only issue is it's probably going to take, like, I want to say another 10 minutes at least, considering that you're probably going to torch down the castle last. When you think about HP, right? Like, the, the secondary TC is 2,500. This castle is 5k. Nothing else really is that tanky. Cool. Whoa. Is he really trying this right now? This just feels like a waste of population. He's trying to go for a snipe on Poppy Port. Now, you should expect that a Mongol player is laid by this point in the game, right? Outpost with cannons everywhere. The problem I have with this play for core is this is now 61 population that he's not defending. And folks, he's not winning in the defense right now. Look what's happening here. Culverin's wasting time sniping out Rams, and they're about to get sniped out themselves. Strozzi full all in there. So anti is going to be gone. After that, the Maganels can wheel back to the front line, and they're already on the way. Six of them, in fact. All the while, core. Cool. 140 military in total, but you need to deduct 60 from that. Marine Lord is always ahead. A few Corrins do at least remain. The core is gold and wood and not looking healthy anymore. Of course, you can see Marine Lord is suffering the same way, but you know, his comp isn't needing as much wood here, considering that he's not pushing archers, he's not pushing camel archers, he's not pushing culverins. Cool, here we go. The wasted assault. Happy New Year! Sorry, guys, it kind of felt like that time. Big firework display. So that was a waste of time. Cost core a bit more of his base. You can at least put that population to use in the right place now. I hope. Problem is, like, the, the other issue with what core done there is it might aggravate Puppy Paw to come to him now. Like, Puppy Paw should try to make a move soon. And when you get pushed by one of the two remaining players, it kind of, it skews you, right? It gives you a little bit of bias. Maybe you start to hold a grudge and target them out. Just look how different these armies are now. No longer is it going to be hand cannoneers in mass from cool. Just the archers. Archers aren't bad here though, right? The composite bow. Not bad solution against the Strelts, considering they have superior range. I actually like this switch up from cool. It means that that flank is, is a bigger risk now, though. Right, north side where he's relying on wood. If this does get pushed by Poppy Paw, he gets taken out of the game instantly. So we'll get another reset between the two. I think Marine Lord is like completely bulked on farms required now. Notice the way he's balancing his eco as well. You know, only 112 into economy, the rest into military. I, it's it's actually balancing the difference between him and Core. Like, sure, Core has bigger surplus, but I think the key thing to keep in mind here is as long as Marine Law is able to afford to replace his army, it doesn't matter. He's better off. Because he's gaining ground of each of these assaults. And wait, is Marine Law now going for Poppy Poor as well? You don't think that they just said something about Poppy Poor in the chat, do you? People asking about like the king give it like why does the king not give like buffs in battle so you kind of use him? I like the idea of that and I've asked for that in different kind of formulas before. I just don't think it works in regicide because when you get to this late phase in the game, what would you do with the king to balance it to be worth the risk? It would have to be borderline busted. And even then, you know, if I see you're playing your king aggressively into my base, let's say let's say you you're marine lord and the king gives all these buffs and you run him into the main base, but you keep him at range, and I'm core with like ten culverins, I can still just kill you instantly, right? So it's it just doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. For regicide, it just makes sense that you just gotta protect this king. If we had a different formula, like there's a, I think there's like ca uh, kings and castles, or castle kings rather, where you have like a castle and a king, and your king can die. Uh, and then respawn per age. As long as you have your castle, you're still in the game. You could possibly do something like that, but that's not the goal with Outback Octagon 2. It's meant to be this soft, squishy objective. So that anyone who just kind of sits back and does nothing can maybe punish for doing so. With one foul swoop. Which is what Marine Lord is trying to do here. And core. Cool. 
Are they? They're not in cahoots, right? It does feel like something has been said here. Either that or it's just a mutual realization that they're both wasting their time. So they might as well just try to seek out Puppy Paw. Because keep in mind, like, you know, with the way that Marindlo has been taking battles, either one of these guys... Oh, wait, you're right. There's a wonder. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Yeah, up here. Thank you. I am an idiot. Ignore me. How did I miss that? But the interesting thing I was going to say is, like, it would have been probably more valuable for them to both try and take out Puppy Paw in the first place. Because if you consider the way that Marinlo was fighting Core, he was beating Core at Population Disadvantage, and Core was losing in that situation. So imagine if either player had an extra 50 population. I think it would have swung the fight clearly one way or the other. Dude, I missed it because of the amount of green. We knew Puppy Paw was setting up for it eventually, but there's so much green here. Like, look at... You guys see on the map, right? <laughs> Half of it is hidden by units. <laughs> Puppy Paw, though. Man, how does he hold this for 13 minutes? Now, one way he could is, is right now, Core isn't setting up a proxy base. Marine Lord is. This is the correct approach. You just can't run across the field like this. Even if you're planning to go cavalry. Marine Lord. He's getting the siege workshops ready. Does he want to rely on Rams here? Can you really rely on Rams is the real question. You know, these cannons, they hit so hard. 73, in fact. I feel like if you're playing Rams, you're just asking for a loss here. Has to be Bombards or Trebs. Bombards have their own risks because they usually end up in range of the, the outposts and they get slapped down. Uh, but Trebs, of course, is a lot slower. However, you do have 12 and a half minutes, so I think you could just build a few Trebs and make it work that way. I just love how Puppy Paul was like the kid who's just crying, Mom, Dad, stop fighting. Although in this grim kind of like metaphor, I guess the parents have turned on the kid. We'll just have to see if Puppy Paul's a Macaulay Culkin. If he's able to be home alone. Mongols at this stage in the game with the eco he's built up behind this. It's possible. And you can see he's just shrinking his eco, more and more going into military. Interesting choice to not pack up, move the prayer tents away. It's just a little bit extra gold that you're missing out on. But he has got 27k gold reserve, so I don't think he cares anymore. Just taking their time, slowly stripping the base down. No point rushing in, losing the whole army and setting yourself back. You guys are correct. This is 200 cap versus 550 cap. The question is. Can Core and Marine Lord get on the same wavelength, or is it going to be like watching two people with left feet try to dance? People say you just need to find the king. I honestly think you need to take the monument. If you try to go for the king, it's going to turn into a little Benny Hills hopping between outposts at range. The only thing you can take from range here that, that makes a lot of sense is going for the monument. Notice he's laid himself so close as well. Monument plus the TC on top of each other. So not easy to just say, oh, we can stretch his army left and right. He can just park in one location. And cool. Wow, he is, he is actually going into the manga, uh, into the ramps rather. I do love the tribes here from Marine Lord. My boy's thinking the same thing. Like, you know, you could throw bombards at this and lose a lot of them. Trebs are good enough. With how hard they hit. You can actually just throw two at each tower if you want to be optimal here. And he did bring four trebuchets, so I think that's going to be his goal. The sacred site has been captured, so Marine Lord, careful, darling. You might draw unwanted attention to you there. Gives the backup plan, but Cool probably looked to Snake and, and just deny this at some point. Cool, I mean... Where's, where's the proxy base? He's just setting up trade instead. Oh, my. Marine Lord not able to go in and assist here. Just too many of these outposts. Spiral Mass is going to move out. Remember, this is late game Mongols, which means they have superior siege range compared to any other type of anti siege. With all that effort, Chorus kills one outpost. Sorry, sorry, I don't want him to do it like Two outposts. I feel like the count. One, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Feels like they need three to beat Puppy Boar right now. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. The Sacred Site is going to be decapped here. I, 
I think cool, like, I get the idea of pushing Mass Cavalry, but just seriously, a Siege Workshop on the front side here. Get one, two Trebs, assist this process. People trying to fear craft. Oh, they're probably just trying to like get, get him to delete the wonder. No, this is just a cheeky little play on the side by Marine Lord. Cool's gonna deny it. I mean, honestly, this negotiation strategy wouldn't work because Puppy Paw's only way of winning this is a wonder. So he's not gonna delete the wonder. He's committed. And to be honest, if you think about it, if Cause and, and Marine Lord's army are in this type of position, even if you delete the wonder, they're not gonna go. They're gonna come in because they're gonna say, okay, now that we actually have moved across the map like this, we're gonna take out the third player because he's extra population for us. So I, I just think this is the best play for Puppy Paw. Just kind of very hard-headed commit to it. Understand that Core and Marine Lord, because they're closely matched, neither one's going to give the other a Sacred Sight victory for free. It's Mango Mass as well. <laughs> Good Lord. I mean, maybe if you go left here. Yeah, yeah, Marine Lord's doing this. If you take out the reproduction of the, the Mongol army, you can kind of break them. The problem is just there's so much siege behind this. But the reason you want to take out these buildings on the left is because it's the it's the meat shield that protects all the siege. That makes it impossible to go in and punish them. Chorus finally arrived though. And this is, needs to be punishment time. He needs to get on top of everything. Dive in. Mass Kamal Archer's hesitation though. He doesn't go for the dive in the end. Honestly, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what Core's plan is with this. Like, Camel Archers can be good for the main kind of, like, assault if you can bait him out with all the spears. It feels like if you want this to work, Core has to go first, and then Marine Lord has to go afterwards, right? Because Core is going to deal with all these, these infantry, and then Marine Lord can deal with the siege. Who asked him why no siege for Core? Because he's allergic to proxy bases. It's like, well, the Abbasid Empire wasn't known for having little places around the world. What are we, the Brits? No, we were a giant empire spanning a desert. The desert seems appropriate here because the, the desolate center is completely uninhabited by him. I, I'm still at a loss for this. Paul apparently did not learn his lesson against the Streltsy. Mass Camel Archers into hand cannoneers is never going to end well. Reach on the left side though, Marine Lord making good pace here. Just under seven minutes away from a Puppy Paw victory. Mass Maganels, always a nuisance, however. Remember, there was no high armory choice from Marine Lord, so his siege, his anti-siege is at a full one tile disadvantage. Very difficult to snipe out these Springles. Puppy Paw sure has plenty of them. CGQE would be proud. 14 Springles and 11 Maganels. Just enough hand cannon ears to make sure anyone who comes in range gets spanked. Notice that this is the point where Puppy Paw has to be a bit more budgeted, though. I think instead of just spamming a bunch of spears to, to brute force the front line, he just leans hard on the hand cannon ears. It's going to drain his food slower. I know it sounds weird because hand cannon ears cost more than the spears, but in terms of what the value is for each individual unit, a hand cannon is going to get you more. And gold isn't a limiting factor for you. However, for Puppy Paw, wood most definitely is. He's drained dry. So now, you know, this, this is kind of the awkward point. If Core had those culverins and was able to snipe out a few siege weapons here, it has an impact now. It's difficult because of the spring range, but it feels like they're just missing the, the key component now. Ay, ay, ay. This is dubious. One's in chat. If Puppy Paws Wonder's going to win. Two, if they can break it. Just like chat's pretty even. See, see, this is the funny part, because I wonder if, if we had said like at the start of this wonder, can he can he win with it? I feel like everyone would have said the wonder gets destroyed. But look how different it is now, how, how split it is between the options. Push in. Then a push back. There's still just so many cannon outposts here. Hand cannon is at the choke points. Means that the melee just can't reign supreme. There's just no clear angle here. 
It's just the, it's just lemmings at this stage. At least from the east side, Marino is making great progress, however. TC getting low. King is gonna have to move soon. He needs to get out of jam, and he needs to do so quick. King, he's hanging, he's vibing, he's just standing his ground right now. What? Where is he? Is he hidden behind them? He's there. What is that crown sign? East side. Elite King is being ignored. Puppy pull down to half HP. Trebs going for the snipe shot. It's such a small target though, he can't hit it. Marine Lord, unable to tag the King. King finally moves away. Puppy pull realizes the mistake. Whew. And that was the critical point. That could have cost him the game there. But now we are three and a half minutes away. Kua has one assault left in him and he still does not have a proxy base. He also has an absurd amount of eco. You just saw it. He had 168 economy. He just deleted it. But this may come too late. Core needs to be fast. Production rates may not be clean enough considering he has to run across a map. <sighs> Puppy poor. I love this. Yeah, Garrison and Villager on the other outposts. That'd be the big brain play. Put the king in the front outpost, no one would ever suspect it. <laughs> one problem here as well, Marine Lord. A little bit slower on the reproduction rate into the mass men at arms. Mass men at arms on this side, a lack of, of anti siege. The problem I do see here from Marine Lord is he doesn't really have the, the, the burst to take a direct fight. He's just the cannon fodder now. However, look at Core's comp. Core is doing the exact same strategy here. Apparently, these guys did not want to communicate and say one should do damage and one should tank. Understandably so. Maybe with subtitles it would have been more, more readable, but yeah, whatever way, it seems like someone was lost in communication here. I can already imagine Marine Lord making a comment about the lack of a proxy base at the end of this when he sees the full map, though. It's it's crazy. I, think, I, I get it when Core was just pushing cavalry, but yeah, at some point... Just a few villagers out, a base built up. It feels like it has to be worth it. I know he's limited on wood, but considering how many horsemen and horse archers built, there was a way. And now Kor is going to try to brute force his way into the base. Maginel shot smashing him down, though. Second wave comes in from the south side. Marine Lord looking for his target. This is problematic, though. The men at arms are stacking like crazy. They're going on top of the king. They're going for the snipe. There's going to be moving out and a shuffle away. And he is in the wind. 1.72 movement speed. King goes room. And the hopes of killing him goes. One and a half minutes away. This king is unchaseable. Even Lancers cannot keep up with him. And caught good God. Where, where was this before? Puppy Boy has done it. I, I just don't see a way anymore. Marine Lord just doesn't have any steam left. And more outposts on the northern front. Like, if this was thinner, there's a way to make this happen. But this, this feels not impossible. Puppy Paw still has 112 hand cannons. Five mangonels is good enough. Ten sprinkles to make sure no siege can threaten him. What a way to do this, though. You know, puppy poor. Person stuck in a corner. Plenty of action to be found in this corner, remember. He started in the same corner as two other players, but yet he was unable to get a single king kill. Puppy poor has spent the last hour and 10 minutes restricted to 200 population. He faces off against 550 population. And yet still, he is able to hold and boldly middle finger them as he shuts down Core and Marino's hopes of getting a win. <laughs>